Well, hey, I hope everybody's doing well. I had a uh, comment on one of my other videos that ended up being about uh, about two pages of qu of questions, and I was looking through the questions, and I realized that this would probably make a good video rather than just answering it on the thread because a lot of this, a lot of these questions are very valid questions and I, and I believe this is a new caricaturist or someone who's trying to break into the business and I, I really feel like a lot of people could benefit from this so with no more introduction I'm going to jump right in. Um, now what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to kind of paraphrase these down a little bit because they are kind of wordy uh, and then I'll try to respond. The first question basically asks Whenever someone's getting into the business of caricature, do I feel that the amusement park is the best or only way to go, or what do I do? I what do I have for or against other methods of learning to do caricatures? Well, first and foremost, uh, I did start in the amusement park. I started with Commons Art Shops and went that route. Now I do have many friends who are just as talented artists who did not do amusement parks. So therefore, uh, I can't really say the way I did it was superior. Um, I know it was it was good for me, but uh, you know, I had the opportunity, I live near a park, and, and in this question they talk about, you know, what if you don't live near an amusement park? Well, obviously it's not gonna be convenient for you. So yeah, I, I think at the heart of it, what's the most important thing is is not the, the uh, method of how you learn but the fact that you do learn the fact that you do spend time honing your skills and, and practicing and studying um, if you don't have an amusement park you know without breaking any local laws go out and set up in a park or you know set up at local festivals or volunteer to go do them for your local uh, boy scout troop or girl scouts or something and you know just to get the practice say hey i'll do you know i'll do it for free because you're getting the experience. I think the biggest thing that I got from the amusement parks is you get a lot of experience and a lot of uh, education crammed into a short amount of time because it's it's so high, it's so fast paced. You're you're basically thrown to the wolves and you're out there in front of the people. Uh, but that's not to say that's the only way to learn. So yes, I think you can learn um, other places beside amusement parks. Just make sure you learn your skills. So the next question talks about uh, doing head and shoulders and doing black and white as, a, as, a, as opposed to doing color and adding bodies and things. So the short answer to that is yes, I think you should start off with just maybe a black and white face. And, and the reason I say that is you're honing in on your, your skills. And as you, as you get some confidence in that, you can start adding more things like bodies and color and things like that. Um, you know your your skill as far as the face it's always going to be changing and growing so so don't wait until you've mastered or you may you may never move on to anything else uh but get a at least a little bit of proficiency there and then you can there again you can still adding on other things the next question talks about uh i'll, I'll read this it says there's so many different ways you could run your business it's almost overwhelming trying to weigh it all i've been Burned investing time in other businesses that never panned out. That's why I'm asking so many questions before I invest years again. Um, well, it's, this is the way I look at it. If if you're an artist, if let's say you do, uh, you like to paint, you like to do all these different things. It is my personal opinion, and I feel very strongly that anything you learn as a caricature artist whether you become a full-time caricature artist or not, I think it will benefit you in your other artist endeavors. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because the skill set that's required to be a good caricature artist, being fast, being able to deal with people, those are, those are skills that a lot of artists, although they may be fantastic artists, a lot of artists don't have that. Uh, it takes a very specific skill set to do caricatures. Um, and, and, it, and it varies. I mean, not everybody's real talkative. Not everybody's super fast. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not good artists. It doesn't even mean they're not a good caricature artist. But I, I like there again, that, that skill set, and, and I have to go back to the amusement park or, or any type of setting where you're dealing with people, um, 
it, it not only builds your artistic skills, but it builds on your um, your ability to deal with different people and uh, goes a long way as far as helping you uh, deal with different types of people. And, and to be quite honest with you, at least for me, I feel like it really has made me a more of a well-rounded person to where uh, a lot of, you know, with, with all the prejudice and stuff we have in the world now, that as a caricature artist, I, I meet people from so many different backgrounds, so many ethnicities, different um, uh, lifestyles and things. And it really, when you spend time with people, as opposed to just uh, you know sitting at home behind your computer, it, I, I really feel like it. Just, at least for me, it's it's made me a better person. So I, I know that's not really quite what you asked, but you know, I had to throw that in there. Uh, but yeah, it, it it'll benefit you. Uh, so so don't ever feel like you're wasting your time. Uh, and the last question here, and I think this is a really good one. It says, do you believe caricatures are supposed to be funny and make people laugh? It would seem to me that such a reaction from the customer is the best feedback you could get as long as they aren't insulted. What do you think of the advice, don't try to fix people? Do you believe in the safe approach that increases the odds of customers actually buying what you drew as opposed to being honest and risk losing the sale because someone didn't like what you uh, drew? I see a lot of cookie cutter work that lacks much of any likeness. Yeah, I think at the heart of it, and 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 I and I'll repeat this because that's that's kind of been my overall theme with this, is is it goes back to skill. Um, I'm not one of those people who says who will say that only really exaggerated caricatures are good, or that they have to be you know side splittingly funny to be good. I think anyone who has a good uh, understanding of the face and of the facial structure and executes a good likeness, to me, that's a good caricature artist, and they can do that relatively fast because, um, you know, different different artists and are going to have different opinions. Some some artists believe in you know just pushing the envelope so far that you know sometimes it's even barely recognizable as a face, and then there's other 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 artists who uh, either they don't possess the skills to do that, or they just don't believe, or they're, or they're and again, like you said, they're scared that they're not going to be able to sell the caricature, so they do a nicer sketch. As long as it's a good caricature, and, and what is a good caricature? There again, it has a likeness that's done relatively fast, and, and it's something you know that looks like the people, whether they like it or not. Um, but as far as exaggeration, I would say just know your audience. And and know what you want to go for. If you if you're going to exaggerate faces a lot, make sure you have your skills first of all. Make sure you know what you're doing. Don't just sit there and distort one feature. Uh, I have to talk about the caricatures network again. And and a real quick shout out. Um, I think Court Jones and Tom Rich Tom Richman has a really good book on caricature. Um, and I, if I can find a link, I'll put it in the link below. Uh, it's a really good book. And I think Court Jones has been teaching some online classes too. Exaggeration is one of those things that I really feel like the more you exaggerate, the more you really have to know what you're doing, and you have to be consistent with it. Because if you um, if you're not, then people can t take that the wrong way. They can say, "Well, why did he exaggerate this person more than this person?" Then it makes you kind of look like you know you could be labeled different things. Um, so therefore. Whatever you do, do it consistently. Um, you know, like I said, I I love all forms of caricature. I've I've studied both. I've studied the really exaggerated ones, and I've studied under uh, artists who uh, actually the guy who passed away a few years ago, Ben Burgraff. His were were more like a comic book style. Don't mean they weren't. You know, some people said, "Well, that's not caricature." It, it is. It is caricature. Um, it was just different style. So. Uh, I, I'm 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 one of those people who who loves it all. So I, uh, I I love all those guys. But yeah, you're you're right. It's it, the the big overall theme is is skills. Work on your skills. Work at getting good at it. And I think you're on the right path. Obviously, you're you're watching this video. You've you're seeking out artists. You're seeking out uh, knowledge. You're, you're seeking out um, skills. So. Uh, 
just keep at it. That's that's what I've been doing for the past 20, 25 years is just I just keep keep hammering away at it and try to get better. Well, hey, as always, I hope this video was relevant. I hope you learned something from it. If you're not already following my channel, be sure to give it a follow. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, like, comment, all that good stuff. You, you know, that keeps the channel growing. And you guys be safe out there, and I'll see you next time.